Hello and welcome, and this is Coach Adam Farr from the MH5 Training System, and today we're going to discuss the movement tree hierarchy, the foundation of the MH5 Training System. How do we select our movements, categorize them, place them, and put them together in such a way that allows us to make sense of the mysteries of training? This is an off-the-cuff webinar. It is unrehearsed. I simply have a slideshow, a series of videos that I'm going to present to you. And I'm going to try to run through all this information as quickly as possible so that you could apply the theory practically immediately. All right, so when we talk about movements, human movements, there are actually seven main or principal human movement patterns. You see them at the top here. There are bends, squats, pulls, pushes, lunges, twists, and gates. Gates being uh, walking patterns. And uh, you notice that the four on the left over here, the bend, squat, pull, and push. Well, I call these your core four movements. If you look at the hour, that drops down to the bottom. And these movements are particularly useful for developing strength and aesthetics, although they are not only used for those purposes. And on the right side, I have what I call the triad, the lunge, the twist, and the gait. And these particular movements or categories of movements help develop mobility and athletic ability. And so that's how we have things categorized right now. Bend, squat, pull, push, lunge, twist, gait. And what I'm going to do in this series of short and practical lectures is explain to you each section in as much detail as possible so that when you're in the gym, when you're in the training environment and you're applying this particular body of knowledge, you're applying it in such a way that makes sense, that is practical, that lends to greater output uh, in terms of the effort you're putting into the gym, in terms of what you're trying to accomplish. So let's start off with bends, okay? There are three main types of bends. You have the Romanian deadlift, the conventional deadlift, and the sumo deadlift. And the order represented here is based on the order that you would learn the movements. Romanian first, followed by conventional, followed by sumo. You're going from, at least in this system, you're going from um, a point of least complexity to most complexity, or a point of initial learning to learning that will occur later on uh, based on how I approach the entire subject matter. So we learn the Romanian deadlift first. All right, so let's dive into the theoretical concepts here with respect to the bends and the deadlifts. Why are we learning bends and deadlifts. And it's really important to have a theoretical foundation for what we're learning so that when I introduce a concept to you, when I tell you to do something a certain way, you could put that in a framework and actually hold on to that information in a, in a nest, if you will, uh, that nest being the framework of knowledge that I'm going to present to you. Um, if you have or you receive this knowledge in a disorganized fashion, you're going to have trouble holding on to it. You're going to have trouble applying to it, applying it, and um, it won't serve you in the long term. And so a lot of the things I'm going to tell you are the long, uh, long held beliefs I've had about training and movement. It's the pearls of training wisdom I've developed over 15 years of being in the game of weightlifting and coaching and personal training and you name it. And so that's what we're talking about today. Bends are so important because they are at the top of the movement tree learning hierarchy. They are the mother of all movements. Every other movement has a little bit of bend in it. Every other movement pattern has the essence of bends or deadlifts inside of it. Squats are very similar to bends. Pushes are very similar to bends. Pulls are very similar to bends. Everything has a little bit of a bend inside of it. And so by mastering bends first, I understand that the foundation of all movement is like doing a deadlift. Well, what you do when you approach the entire system, the entire movement tree hierarchy, is you approach everything like a bend. You start to see that connection and you simplify the entire system because you see that everything is really just one thing and the complexity really isn't there. It's actually a lot of simplicity. And the way I go about teaching this, as you probably have already gathered, is through stories and metaphors over lists. It's a lot easier to incorporate the meaning behind a story, the symbolism behind a metaphor, than it is to remember a list of things to do. It's a lot more easily understood when I make the analogy of you being a Romanian, a sexy Romanian waitress um, than it is for you to say, okay, step one, let me bend over. Step two, 
let me uh, bring my shoulder blades back. Step three, you know, uh, retract your scapula, you name it, you know, all this wordy stuff. It doesn't matter uh, to think on those terms. What we want is practical, immediately actionable information and stories and metaphor are great for that purpose. And not to mention, it's how the brain learns fastest. For hundreds of thousands or even millions of years, human beings have transmitted knowledge through storytelling, through metaphor, through symbolism. And I aim to do the same. I don't try to sit here in front of you and tell you how smart I am with all the big words I could come up with. I'm trying to get you to deadlift. So that's what we're doing. We're going to start off by watching a short little video on the subject. So let me play that video right now. And uh, this video is me talking to a client of mine, giving her the rundown of how I go about teaching the Romanian deadlift or the deadlift series. And uh, all you got to do is sit back, watch this, and absorb the information. Let me take you for a ride. Um, we have the first phase, verbal cues. Okay, Romanians are sexy. Close the door, shave the legs, slap in the butt. All right, there's a portion of this video that emphasizes this. We're going to watch that part now. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to learn the Romanian deadlift. Okay, this is the first and most important exercise to learn. The way I teach it, Vanessa, is through storytelling, okay? So follow along with me, and it's all going to make sense as we do it, okay? But just follow along for now. So repeat after me. Romanians are sexy. <laughs> Romanians are sexy. Okay, that's a principle here. Now, and the reason I say Romanians are sexy are because when you're doing the lift, you want to be in a sexy posture, which involves sticking your chest out, just looking good, not being slumped over. That's what I mean by sexiness. Close the door, shave your legs, slap in the butt. Repeat after that. Close, Close the, the door, door shave your legs, legs, slap in the butt. Good. Now I'm going to tell you a story. I want you to imagine that you're a sexy Romanian waitress and you work in a restaurant and you, uh, you serve cocktails. And you're walking around the restaurant, you're wearing like a short skirt, you look really, really good. And, uh, and you notice that, oh my gosh, you know, you're, you have these cocktails in your hands. You're coming out of the kitchen with the cocktails and the, uh, the head chef always gets mad at you. He says, Vanessa, close the goddamn door. And because your hands are full, you always have to close the door by bending over and hitting the door with your butt. So if there's a door behind me over here, I'd bend over and I would hit it, okay? That's what close the door means. Once you close the door in this imaginary scenario of ours, you look, you bent, you're bent over and you notice that your legs are kind of hairy and this kind of makes you concerned because tonight you have a, a date with a sexy uh, athlete, a hockey player, and uh, if you have hairy legs, uh, you're not going to be able to steal his money. So when you're closing the door, you grab your little razors and you shave your legs as you come up. Just as you're coming up, the head chef comes out of the kitchen. He looks to see if you close the door. He sees your butt hanging out uh, because you bent over and he gives you a nice slap in the butt. So it looks like this. Close the door, shave your legs, slap in the butt. So close the door, shave your legs, slap in the butt. When you get slapped in the butt, that's the uh, reaction you have, okay? This is all new to you. This is weird, okay? So, but this is the storyline that I use to teach someone how to do this movement. It's a lot easier to remember a silly story like that than it is to remember uh, hip flexion, you know, thoracic extension, and all these wordy things. So that is a story, the basic story of a Romanian deadlift. And there's five layers to this story. So I'm going to start by showing you this, okay? Let me just put this in the center here. I'm wearing my yellow socks for a reason, so you can see what my feet do. So, close the door. The bar comes close to your legs. It's literally touching my legs. Shave the legs. Slap in the butt. Closing the door. Shaving my legs. Slap in the butt. Closing the door. Shaving my legs. Slap in the butt. That's the first layer of a five-layer cake that we're building. That's a story. And once you learn this story, you're going to know everything you need to know about training. So, go over there, behind the bar. You take your shoes off, and I'll explain this in greater detail later. You already know. You already know me a bit, okay? So, approach the bar. I want you to grab it. When you grab the bar, I want you to put one thumb like this, and the same on the other side, okay? Your thumb should be aligned with the knurling over here. Look at what I'm doing. There you go. That's the knurling, that little separation there. Okay. Same thing over there. That, now you have an equidistant grip. Now you can wrap your thumb around. Okay, good. So, 
First thing is to get sexy. This, this arched back of yours, not sexy, exactly. You stick the boobs out, all right, awesome. Shave the legs, open those knees a bit, take a nice deep breath in, and I want you to stand up. Good, take a nice deep breath in. Close the door, bring your hips back, shave the legs as you go down, and right back up. We're doing three in a row, go. That's two. Always look straight ahead, don't look at me. Shave those legs, don't forget the bottom. Three, and back down. Good, okay? So you see how the bar separated here? Mm -hmm. Okay, you have to shave your legs the whole time. Okay. For every centimeter or for every inch that the bar separates from your leg, it's gonna be seven times more pressure on your lumbar spine. So if this weighs 100 pounds, that's gonna be 700 pounds of torque pressure or torsion force on your spine. You don't want that. Come back over here. So, let's review that again, okay? Shoes off. So no shoe training here. Make the feet smart. Here I am, I grab the bar. Again, my thumbs aligned with the knurling here, standard barbell. Get sexy, so this is what sexy is. This, not sexy, okay? This, chest out, knife in the back, or a nice straight back, very sexy. <sighs> Closing the door, shave the legs, slap in the butt. Close the door, shave the legs, slap in the butt. We're doing three every time, okay? Go ahead, do it again. Thumbs. Your thumbs are there, exactly. Inside. Good. You should be shaving your legs. Good. Get yeah. sexy now. Exactly. Look at the bar. You're always looking at the bar. Okay. Good. I want you to lean back a bit. Look at the bar, though. You don't have to look up. There you go. Okay? So okay. when you're on this bar here, you're pulling on it slightly. I want you to pull. Okay? This bar weighs 95 pounds. I mean, this, this weight over here weighs 95 pounds, which means you could lean back about 95 pounds and you'll stay in balance because that's your counterweight. Mm -hmm. Always look at the bar, take a nice deep breath in, <sighs> slap in the butt. Slaps you, good. <sighs> Breathe out. <sighs> Close the door, shave the legs, tap it and come back up. <sighs> Hold your breath, ready? <sighs> Close the door, shave the legs, looking at the bar, right back up now. Up, up, up. <sighs> and put it back down. Great. That's layer number one. You may go over here. So Romanian deadlifts, as you have already experienced, uh, Romanian deadlifts uh, revolve around this Romanian waitress story. And uh, one of the key cues that I've been using for almost every movement is this set of cues that says air in the lungs, feet, fingers, thumb. Something to repeat to yourself over and over and over again before every single list, uh, lift is to say air in the lungs, feet, fingers, thumbs. That is a sequence of events that kind of triggers you to lift that weight in perfect sequence. You breathe in first, <gasps> fill your lungs with air, a nice diaphragmatic breath. You then torque the feet out, which is that open the pickle jar cue. You do the same with your hands, which is what the fingers is all about, and you really squeeze that bar. You wrap your thumb around the bar. In almost every single movement, this is the sequence, air into lungs, feet, fingers, thumbs. That's where your focus should go and in what order it should go there. You should first focus on your breathing, then your feet, your fingers, and your thumbs. The same techniques that are shown here with the barbell can also be sh done with the dumbbell. And what you do when you're manipulating dumbbells as a general rule is that you hold the dumbbells as if they are a barbell set, right? Um, you would basically manipulate everything in the exact same way with dumbbells as you would with barbells. The difference being with the barbell, it's a lot easier to learn a movement, a new movement like this, the barbell, because it's kind of like having a set of training wheels on. Uh, dumbbells might be a bit more complicated. However, barbell is still the ultimate tool when it comes to body transformation and weightlifting, um, athletic development in general, from powerlifting to Olympic lifting to general strength and conditioning. Um, barbells are king. And uh, every time you practice these movements, every time you go over these video demonstrations, I want you to get into character. I want you to imagine you're that Romanian, that sexy Romanian waitress. I want you to imagine it's you. Because if you don't get into character, it's going to be hard to remember things. But if you just say, hey, what would a sexy Romanian waitress do in this situation? Well, then all of a sudden, all the cues, all the subtle things that you got to do, 
comes back to you. Now, what about the second layer of the cake? Angry bus driver, newspapers under the armpits, knife in the back. These are the cues. Let's watch that video. I will now start to show you layer number two. So the first layer of your cake was Romanians are sexy, close the door, shave your legs, slap in the butt. The second layer of your cake is angry bus driver, newspaper in the armpit, knife in the back. Say it with me. Angry bus driver, angry bus driver. newspaper in the armpit, newspaper in the armpit, knife in the back. Let me tell you the story. So during the weekdays, or sorry, during the weekends, you're a waitress, but during the weekends, you're a bus driver and the kids call you the angry bus driver because you're always driving and you're holding your bus driver wheel and you're just white knuckling it. You're just like this, okay? You grab the wheel and you're just trying to always break it because you just hate your job. So why don't you do that for me? Imagine there's a wheel here, okay? And just imagine you're breaking it, good. As soon as you do the angry bus driver, okay? As soon as you do that, you activate these muscles. Imagine there's two newspapers under your armpit. There's a newspaper here, there's a newspaper here. While you're driving, you have newspapers on your armpit, okay? okay? So you're this angry bus driver, driving the bus, trying to make a little bit of extra money, and you deliver the newspapers at the same time. So you have stacks of newspapers under your armpits. I want you to follow along. Do that with me. Angry bus driver, newspaper in your armpit. Good, okay? As soon as you do that, okay? Why don't you put your hands on my, uh, on my two back muscles here? Look what's happening when I do that. You feel those muscles contract? Yeah. That's what angry bus driver, newspaper in your armpit is. Okay. The reason we do this is simple. When you contract these muscles, when you do that motion, all these muscles begin to stabilize your spine. And your brain says, oh, if my spine is stable, then I'm not at risk for injuring my spine. Because of that, I'm going to allow my body to lift a heavy weight because it senses the stability. If you don't do that, your brain will sense the instability in your shoulders and in your spine, and it will not allow you to lift the weight. That's why somebody could have a certain amount of weight on the bar, let's say 200 pounds, and then they just increase by five, and for whatever reason, they're not able to lift that extra five pounds. Why? Because they didn't create the same amount of st stability. So again, angry bus driver, do it with me. Newspaper in the armpit, now knife in the back. Little boy named Johnny hops on the bus. He has his little knife, he brought his pocket knife to school, and as you're driving, he stabs you right in the back. What's your reaction? It's this. Ah, you get stabbed in the back. Looks like that, right? Do that for me. Okay, good. So put your hands over here. Okay, angry bus driver, newspaper in your pit, knife in the back, everything is contracted. You could even feel the muscles down here contracting. Let me demonstrate. So Romanians are sexy, so be sexy, right? My little motion for sexiness is like this. Grab the bar, shave the legs, slap in the butt. Angry bus driver, newspaper in your armpit, knife in the back. See what's happening with my arms here? Close the door, shave your legs, slap in the butt. Close the door, shave the legs, slap in the butt. Here's the angry bus driver part. All right, why don't you give it a shot? When I come back up. What's that? When I come back up. Do the, uh, bus driver? You're doing it the entire time. The entire time. The entire okay. time you're doing the angry bus driver. Okay. Go ahead. So you're adding layers here, okay? Yeah. Good. So now shave your legs. Okay. Romanians are sexy. Think about it. Romanians are sexy. Mm -hmm. So get sexy. Good. Okay. You remember Slap the story the now? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead now. Slap in the butt. Go down. You have to look at the bar and shave the legs. The bar should never separate from your legs. Good. Keep it up all the way down. Yeah, don't let the bar separate. Pause over here, take a deep breath in. Angry bus driver, newspaper in your armpit. Look straight ahead, knife in the back, close, go ahead. Awesome. Go back over there. All right. Here we are. That's fine. So, let's repeat the story, okay? 
What's the first part of the story, the first layer of this cake? Romanians are sexy. Close the door, shave your legs, slap in the butt. Repeat after me. Romanians are sexy. Shave your legs, slap in the nope. butt. Pull the door. Romanians are sexy. Close the door, shave your legs, slap in the butt. Go. Romanians are sexy. Yep. Close the door. Close the door. Shave, shave your legs. legs. Slap in the butt. That's the general movement. The second layer on top of that, the details, okay? Angry bus driver, newspaper in the armpit, knife in the back. So what is it? It's angry bus driver, newspaper in the armpit, knife in the back. All these things I'm telling you, you don't have to remember the steps. You have to remember the story. There's one story. It's this life of a waitress. Right? Mm -hmm. And she has multiple jobs and she, does all, she goes on these adventures and you're just remembering the story of her life. So putting it all together again. Get sexy. So I'm closing the door. As I'm closing the door, I'm shaving my legs. I got my angry bus driver, newspaper in your armpit, knife in the back. Touch the ground lightly. I don't lose tension. Come right back up. Two. Three. Try that one more time and then we're going to the next level. <clears throat> Romanians are sexy. Shave the legs, good. Push your feet to the ground, that's the first one, good. One. Okay, so I want you to exhibit control. Don't slam it onto the ground, all right? Okay. Stop, breathe out. Take a deep breath in. Angry bus driver, newspaper in your armpit, knife in the back. Close the door, shave your legs, and right back up. <laughs> Breathe with me, ready? Breathe in. Close the door, shave your legs, right back up. One more. Close the door, shave your legs, right back up. Put it down, under control, and relax. Good, stand over here. Awesome. Now, um, like I was alluding to earlier, right? Uh, I speak in stories, I speak in metaphor, and, um, and the difference here is, you know, what do you want to be, at least in this situation, what do you want to be, a pilot or a waitress, right? A pilot, an airline pilot, uh, has a long checklist of things he's got to do before takeoff, during flight, and uh, in landing. And it's very difficult to be a pilot. It takes many, many years of training, thousands of hours of flying time, and it's hard. And if I were, you know, your typical coach, your typical trainer, your typical strength and conditioning professional, I would probably give you a list of things to do and say, do this, then that, then that, then that. The thing about that is that it doesn't resonate with the human mind well. And as I mentioned earlier, if I give you a story, if I give you a metaphor, and you kind of have that mental image, that emotional storytelling that kind of resonates with you at the emotional level, that is going to be much more easily integrated into your brain, into your long-term memory than any list I could ever provide for you. And so I don't get wordy with my language, as you know, and I ask you to feel, don't think. You'll hear me say it over and over again. Feel, don't think. Don't think about the steps. Feel the story. Become the sexy Romanian waitress in every single move we're going to be doing here and uh, moving forward into this program. And of course, as you go through this technical, theoretical information, I would also ask that you go over the basic videos, the instructional videos, and repeat and practice these movements at the home or at, the, uh, at your gym over and over and over again, as if I'm right there in front of you, giving you the cues. Go home, practice, put a pair of earphones on, and listen to me speak over and over and over again, going over the subtle details until this stuff becomes automatic. It shouldn't take you that long, okay? If you go through this whole program and you put about one week's worth of effort into just learning, as if I was right in front of you teaching you this stuff um, with uh, deliberate practice, right? Let's say you put in about 15 hours of total deliberate practice. You should be pretty good, and you may only have to revisit this material once in a while. All right, so some key concepts in applying the theoretical knowledge, the cues behind the Romanian deadlift. 
Key concept number one, the sexiest of all movements. You'll hear me say it over and over again. You got to get sexy. Before you do a Romanian deadlift, I want you to get sexy. Get into character and imagine you are that sexy Romanian waitress. You're role playing here, right? And as you're doing the movement, instead of thinking step one, step two, shoulders back, chest out, blah, blah, blah. Forget it. Just imagine you're a sexy Romanian waitress because the term sexy actually implies everything else that I'm telling you. The, the term sexy implies that your chest is out, your shoulders are, uh, are back and down. It implies that your butt is sticking out. It implies that you're in perfect form, you're confident, and you're, you're breathing a certain way. That's what sexy implies. And that's why I use the term sexy, the symbolism of sexy, instead of having you memorize a list. A list. So the overarching cues in this movement are get sexy, air in the lungs, feet, finger, thumbs. If you just remember those two things and repeat that to yourself over and over again when executing the movement, then you shouldn't have any issues. And so the Romanian deadlift, as you know, I present it in five different layers. The first layer. Let's look at the video here. And let's observe what I'm doing. First thing I'm doing here is I'm taking that big, deep breath. Look at that again, okay? Big, deep breath. <sighs> Breathing in. Look at my face. Damn, I'm, I'm handsome. Look at me. Taking that deep breath, grabbing the bar now. Look what I do with my thumbs. I have my thumbs at the, um, at the knurling. The tip of my thumb is at that point where the bar begins to knurl, which is that rough part of the bar versus the smooth part. And I start to set myself up for the movement. The bar is right up against my shin. All right, perfectly straight. And I have this little movement here I'm doing there where I kind of torque the bar up. What I did there was I just created a lot of tension underneath my armpits with my hands. I call that opening the pickle jar and putting the newspaper under the armpit. That's what I'm doing right there. Okay, I'm driving that bar towards my midline, towards my body, my center of gravity. I want that bar to shave my legs, to hug my body so the center of gravity remains over my feet. That is a great execution. Look at my face. I'm looking down. My spine is neutral. All right, I'm not looking up. My eyes aren't up. I'm actually looking down at the floor. Taking that breath again. Now again with the shoulders, right? I'm really creating tension here. Opening the pickle jar. Taking a breath in. My feet are torquing. All these things are happening at the exact same time as I descend and I, as I ascend. In both directions, I am constantly having this torsion being applied. I am breaking the bar, tearing it apart. And uh, it'll put quite a bit of strength on you. My knees are pushing out. It's as if I'm riding a horse, right? When you ride a horse, you have that big horse torso, that body that you have to create space for. Very similar as I'm descending in a deadlift, I'm opening up that space. I'm pushing my knees out. I'm pushing my feet out. All of this comes together to create a buttload of stability, which will help you to lift a much heavier weight than usual. Here's another angle. Okay, grabbing the bar again. Driving that bar towards my shins, squeezing, newspaper in your armpit, knife in the back. There you go. Take a nice deep breath in. <sighs> Close the door, shave the legs, slap in the butt. All right, I'm doing it over and over again. That's the symbolism. That's the terminology. All right, shaving the legs as I come up. My spine is completely straight. You don't have to remember these details here. When I say my spine is completely straight and it's aligned, fine. But this is implied by sexy. Right? There's about a 35, 45 degree bend in the knee. That's what a uh, Romanian deadlift is. And look where my eyes are looking, all right? I'm looking where I'm going. And all I'm doing is I'm going up and down, right? And I'm always looking at the floor. That plate hits the ground every time. That's not hovering. It hits the ground because when you pick something up off the ground, it's on the ground. It's not hovering there waiting for you to pick it up. It's some sort of anti-gravity technology. My feet are always torqued, slamming into the ground. I'm always opening that pickle jar. You may not see it that well. Um, in this video, but trust me, my feet are under a lot of tension and uh, I'm doing it over and over again. You see that tension I'm providing here? Look under my lats as they flare out. Whether you're very musculated or not, or muscular or not, you have the capacity to do that newspaper under the armpit movement. Take a look at my head here, taking that breath over and over again. It's air in the lungs, feet, fingers, thumbs. You're seeing me apply it here over and over again. There's a lot of tension in my body. There's a lot of redness on my skin. There's blood flowing everywhere. 
The deadlift is the mother of all movements. Every single part of your body is being activated. Look at that, taking a nice deep breath in. Newspaper in the armpits, that's what this is. Newspaper in the armpits is that movement. If I had two newspapers under my armpit, what would that look like? It would make my elbows point towards the camera in this example. All right, that's a newspaper under the armpit. You want to hold on to that. Well, you're doing that with the bar. You want to keep your whole body tight. All right, your torso is one piece moving together, knees coming out once again. It is not an easy task, but this is how you develop the foundation of strength, all right? That's what it looks like. Knees always pushing out. Your hands have to be wide enough to allow your knees to push out. If your knees are pushing your arms out because you didn't take a wide enough grip, you're in trouble. So always driving through the feet, by the way, always pushing my feet into the ground. The entire movement is not me pulling on the bar. It's me pushing my feet through the ground and the bar moves up as a consequence of my feet pushing into the ground. And I repeat, rinse, wash, repeat. Rinse, wash, repeat. That is a Romanian deadlift. Another angle here, big breath. Newspaper in your armpit. Knife in the back. Grabbing the bar, air in the lungs, feet, fingers, thumbs. That's what's going on in my head right now. Take a nice deep breath again. Close the door, shave the legs. Knife in the back, newspaper under your armpits, all that good stuff. <sighs> Breathing the air out. <sighs> nice deep breath in. There you go. Newspaper in the armpit, all that tension. Everything is tight. All right. It's a lot of grip work here. You may not be able to lift as much when you're learning this way of doing things, but what you're doing is you're setting a foundation that will allow you to actually progress much further than you've ever progressed before with respect to this lift, this foundational movement because you're setting a strong foundation uh, with regards to your technical approach. And you do this for six months, trust me, you're a completely different person. You do this for a year, trust me, you're a completely different person. It will show in your physique. Look how aligned my spine is, all right? My head and my spine are aligned, straight line. My arms are completely straight. They're just hanging there. That's why it's a deadlift. Your arms are dead. They're just hanging there like a lever. There you go. And look at that face, that focus, that handsome devil. What is this haircut I got on here? This is an old video. Don't judge me. That is a Romanian deadlift, my friends. Phase three, layer number three, cave diver breath. This is the sequence of events. Again, you don't have to remember all of this. You just have to recall it or, or internalize it emotionally. There's a story here. Let's watch the video. Start of the third layer of the K. So let's review the story. You're a waitress, you work in a restaurant, you deliver cocktails, wearing a short skirt, you have to close the kitchen door with your butt. You close it, you look at your legs, they need to be shaved, so you start to shave your legs. Just as that's happening, the head chef comes, slaps you in the butt, all right? There's a little bit of sexual uh, harassment at work, but you let it slide because you kind of like it. And uh, during the week or during the day, you're a bus driver, you grab the wheel of the, uh, the bus, you're squeezing it, you're also delivering newspapers as you drive the bus at every stop, so you're making a little bit of extra money, and you have kids in the bus, they bring knives to school and they stab you in the back, okay? It doesn't, doesn't have to make sense, it just has to be memorable. So, angry bus driver, newspaper, you're gonna put a knife in the back. Now, third layer of the story, cave diver breath, all right? So after working in the restaurant and as a bus driver for so many, uh, for so many months, you said, oh, I need a vacation. And so you book a trip to, uh, to Mexico and you decide to, uh, to do a cave diving expedition in Mexico. You're gonna dive in caves with scuba gear on and you're gonna take a class with all these people and it's gonna be great. And so first, first class, your first day there, you slept in and you're late. And so you run, you're running to try to catch everyone and everyone's already gone. They've already gone into the cave and you didn't know how to learn, you didn't learn how to put on your equipment, you don't know what you're doing, so you just go into the cave after them, and you swim, and you're diving underwater, and you realize, oh my gosh, I don't have any cave diving equipment, scuba diving equipment, and I'm running out of air, and I'm basically going to suffocate and die. But you see in the corner of the cave, you see a little flash of light, and there's a little pocket of air, so you swim to it as quickly as you can, and you surface, and what do you do? If you're about to drown, you're underwater, and you surface and you're about to get air. 
what's your reaction? You, <gasps> you gasp for air, okay? And you'll notice that a lot of people in the gym, um, they don't breathe properly. They'll, it's like they're smoking a joint while they're working out, or they're breathing by the nose, okay? But what you need to do to stabilize your body is gasp for air, and let me demonstrate that, why that's important, okay? Take your two fingers like this, put it behind your neck, like that. I want you to breathe in like you're smoking the joint first. You don't feel much movement there. Now I want you to gasp. Go, louder, I wanna hear it, go. Okay, you feel those muscles contract? Mm -hmm. Those muscles, or by gasping, it basically engages uh, the muscles of your spine called the multifidus muscles, and all the vertebrae of your spine separate and elongate. You get a little taller, right? Your spine becomes more stable. Your brain senses that, and your brain says, hey, I like that, I like that you're stable. I'm going to allow you to lift the heavier weight because I know I won't injure myself. That's what cave diver breath is. So if we put it all together, Romanians are sexy, close the door, shave your legs, slap in the butt, angry bus driver, newspaper in your pit, knife in the back, <gasps> cave diver breath. <sighs> okay, so I'm going underwater. There's water up to my neck, I'm going underwater. <sighs> Take a deep breath, <sighs> holding my breath. Why do we breathe that way? Very simply, when you breathe in, air goes into your lungs. Your lungs expand. It creates air pressure that pushes out. It makes your torso, your trunk more stable, okay? When you do the angry bus driver, newspaper in your armpit, knife in the back, all the muscles of your spine contract, stabilize your spine, you have more pressure. Your whole trunk becomes like a compressed cylinder. Also, when you flex your core and you take that air in, your lungs expand, your diaphragm drops down. There's a little muscle here called your diaphragm. It drops down. It pushes all your organs into your pelvic floor and that squishes all your organs together. That creates hydraulic pressure. And so your whole body is a big compressed cylinder and that's what you need in order to lift a weight, any weight. You need to do that all the time. It's not just for deadlifts, it's for everything that follows deadlifts. So again, here we go. And then it's you. It's here. You're up. That's right, get sexy now. Good. Take a nice deep breath in. Look straight ahead, don't look at me, okay? Take a nice deep breath in. Close the door, shave your legs. Look at the bar, you're shaving your legs. Make sure you don't nick yourself. Come back up. Do not lose tension on the bar. Don't let it go, okay? Down. Right back up, right back up, go. One more. Right back up, right back up. Put it down and relax. Good, don't let it ever separate. Good, awesome, stand right over here. That's the third layer of the cake. Stand right there for me. It's Perfect. Hot. It's a little hot, I know. Why don't you put your <laughs> shoes on? Don't worry about it. It's not, uh, nothing to worry about. Perfect, so let's go over the layers of the cake again. Romanians are sexy. Close the door, shave your legs, slap in the butt. Don't remember the points, remember the story. Why is all that happening? Remember, imagine yourself in the restaurant. Imagine the uniform you're wearing. Imagine the guy coming to slap your ass. If you imagine that storyline, if you imagine that scenario happening, that scenario playing out, um, then you're gonna remember the sensation or the feeling or the emotion behind the movement. And that's all you have to remember. That's like pressing a button that triggers a sequence or a program in your brain, like a computer. 
So we're, we're putting software in, we're writing the code for software. And once the software is in, you just have to press a button every time. And the button you're pressing is an emotional memory. That's the first layer. Second layer, angry bus driver, newspaper in your armpit, knife in the back. Why are you angry? You hate your job, you need the extra money. Billy stuck a knife in your back, right? That's the name of the kid, Billy, I didn't tell you that. You're delivering the newspapers, life sucks. Cave diver breath, you go on vacation, and you learn to breathe. The fourth layer of the cake, open the pickle jar. Okay, let's review that particular part of this wonderful technique. Um, fourth layer. On your vacation in Mexico, you met the scuba, dive, uh, scuba diving instructor. Pablo was his name. And... Uh, and you had a good time, you guys, uh, you hung out while you were there and um, you got back home and all of a sudden you're back home and you start craving pickles. You really wanna eat a lot of pickles. So you go to the grocery store and you buy two big bottles of pickles and you try to, you know, you, you're like, man, why am I eating all these pickles? You're trying to open them up and, um, and you're just unable to. And you're just wondering to yourself, well, why am I not able to, or why, why am I craving these pickles is what you're saying to yourself. So you go to the pharmacy and you get a birth control test, you pee on, a, pee on your stick and you realize, oh my God, I'm pregnant. That one night with Pablo uh, at the cave diving school knocked you up, right? And so you're like, now I really want these pickles. So before you were trying to open them and you just couldn't open it, right? You couldn't open the jar and you said to yourself, well, you know what, I have pretty strong legs. What if I take the jar, put it on the ground and I try to open it with my foot, okay? See what's happening with my foot here? I'm pressing down on the ground and I'm creating an arch, an exaggerated arch with my foot. So all the pressure is on my toes and the outside of my foot. And I'm doing this with both feet, like that. This is what I call opening the pickle jar, okay? That's layer number four, opening the pickle jar. You're doing this with your hands and you're doing it uh, with your feet. At the same time, you're opening the pickle jar, all right? This is torquing your body. And that's layer number four. And so when you put it all together, it looks like this. See how I'm opening the pickle jar with my hands and my feet now? I'm white knuckling it, right? My feet are like that. My feet aren't like this, they're like that. See what happens to my knees? They push out. and I'm doing that the whole time. Let's go over the sequence again, all right? The story, Romanians are sexy, close the door, shave your legs, slap in the butt. All right, that looks like this. The sexy position means sticking your chest out, being proud, slap in the butt, shave the legs. I'm doing the angry bus driver, newspaper in the armpit, knife in the back, all right? I'm taking my cave diver breath. And I'm going down, bringing it down slowly. As I'm doing that, I'm opening the pickle jar. Let's review opening the pickle jar. You went to Mexico. You got knocked up by the cave diving instructor. And there are these uh, pickles you've been craving. And you're trying to open up the pickle jar. So you take the pickle jars. You try to open with your hand. You can't do it. You put them on the ground with your feet. And you grab the jars. And you twist open with your feet, creating these artificial arches. That's what open the pickle jar means. So when you put it all together, looks like this. I'm opening the pickle jar with my feet and I'm also opening the pickle jar with my hands. I'm torquing out. Look what happens to my elbows, okay? My elbow crease is facing in towards my body. And when I open the pickle jar with my hand, like turning a doorknob, they face out, all right? At the same time, when that's happening, that's similar to holding a newspaper under the armpit. It's creating stability all along my spine. My entire back is flexing. See what's happening? That's stability for your spine. That's what allows you to lift something really, really heavy and continue to do so over time. So it's all the mechanical pressures that we need to progress with the weight. The further you progress with the weight, the more your body changes. Very quiet and controlled when I put it down. <sighs> 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 
Go ahead. You're up. So approach that bar. Make the bar touch your legs, your shins. Good. All right. Get sexy first. Wait until I say go, by the way. Knife in the back. Newspaper in the armpit. Your eyes are here. This is what's important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pull on the bar. Lean back. Okay. Keep your eyes over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lean back. Good. Open the pickle jar with your feet. Okay. You need to lean back. This is the problem right now. There should be upward pressure here. There's no upward pressure. Lean back with 95 pounds of force. Great. Take a nice deep breath in. Go ahead. Look straight ahead. Slow down. Take a nice deep breath. Good. Look at the ground. And up. Good. And put it down and relax. Great. Don't let it separate next time. Good. The fifth layer of this cake, the final layer, be a road bike, not a mountain bike. What does that imply? What does it mean? Let's watch the video. Okay, the last part of this little story here. Just pause there for a second. Put my shoe in the way here. Last part of the story. It's uh, not a riddle, but it's basically a little brain teaser here. What's faster, a road bike or a mountain bike? On a straightaway, on the road, what's faster? A road bike? A road bike. Why is a road bike faster? A road bike has a stiff frame. It doesn't have shocks to absorb energy. And so when you deadlift, you want to be more like a road bike and less like a mountain bike. And a lot of people, when they deadlift, they're more like a mountain bike. And what do I mean by that? Very simple. They're lazy deadlifters. They grab the bar, they put themselves in position, and they lean on the bar. And you were kind of doing this before. You were leaning on the bar. And what ends up happening is as you lean on the bar like that, you end up yanking the bar and pulling it. You hear that noise that's being made? That's the sound of the bar hitting the, uh, the inner circle of the plate. Okay? It means that there's not enough tension on the bar when you're lifting it. It means you're too relaxed. And so when someone lifts like a mountain bike, they do this and they lose energy here, this shock here, here, but most importantly in the lower back. And that's why people hurt their backs when they deadlift. So don't be a mountain bike, be a road bike. A road bike means creating tension from the very beginning of the movement. So look at me here and I'm already pulling back. Look at my wrists. Okay. They're straightened out because I'm already pulling. I'm not like this. I'm not leaning on the bar. I'm conditioned to be like this. It's very hard to, to do this, but you have to condition your body to do it. Now I'm leaning so far back that if I were to let go, I'd actually fall backwards. Why? Because this is 95 pounds, which means I could shift 95 of my pounds, my body weight backwards. And that's what you want to do. You want to balance it out. You want the bar to become an extension of your body. It is a part of you, right? If you lean too far forward like this and you lift it, the bar is going to want to move away because your center of gravity is too far forward. You have to bring your center of gravity right, right where it belongs, which is near the shins, center of your feet. If your center of gravity is too forward, as you lift it, it's going to move away from you and you're going to hurt your back, right? So this is why we shave the legs. You understand? So every part of the story that I've told you addresses all these issues. You don't have to remember all these subtle details. You just have to remember the story. This is why I tell the ridiculous story. Romanians are sexy, right? Everything is embodied by the word sexy. Everything we've talked about. You don't have to remember the pickle jar thing. You don't have to remember the waitress thing. They're all useful things to remember, but you don't have to. Because when I say sexy, what does that mean? It means stick your chest out. Torque your hands, torque your feet. This is sexy, the opposite is not. This is sexy, the opposite is not. Deep breath in, <sighs> sexy. <sighs> Exhaling out, not sexy. So everything we're doing is about that. When you put it all together, you get a Romanian deadlift. And this is the baseline story that you're gonna use for all the movements in the 21 movement hierarchy. 
memory in the MH5 system. So, I'll do it really exaggerated now. Your turn. Go for it. So where's your focus? It's on the bar, right? On the bar. Get sexy. Okay, you know what it means now, exactly. Newspaper in the armpit. Knife in the back. Scuba diver breath. <sighs> Open the pickle jar, stand up. You see how easy you respond to the cues now. <gasps> Open the pickle jar, shave the legs, close the door, stay sexy, slap in the butt. You only breathe in the bubble of air. One more. Up. Good. And relax, okay? Let me just address something. When you're breathing, you're rushing, okay? Put your foot on this for a second. Just put your foot on it. You're breathing, you're rushing, and you're going, you're coming to the top, with empty lungs and you don't fill up your lungs again. You go, you give like a little weak breath. And because of that, when you go back down, you don't have as much pressure, which means your spine isn't as stable, which means you become weaker, which means you burn energy, which means you're not training efficiently, which means you're not gonna get as good results over time, okay? So at the top, you take your time to, you let it all out over here at the top of the cave in that little air pocket that I was describing. And then again, You see how my lungs expand, my whole body becomes longer, and they have more stability when I breathe in. It's stable. I say gasp because it's audible. I want to hear the gasp. If you can't hear it, it's not a gasp, right? You're just, you're breathing in, you're smoking a joint, right? Try it again. Go really slow. It's also a little heavy for me. I know it's heavy, but I need this to concentrate to not drop it. That's fine. <laughs> if it was too light, you wouldn't learn anything either. So shave those legs, get sexy. Good, you need to lean back there. Be a road bike, not a mountain bike, exactly. Open the pickle jar. Take a nice deep breath now. <gasps> Eyes over here. <gasps> Look at the bar, that's it. Push through your feet and stand up. <sighs> Don't let go of the air at the bottom, one more. And come right back up. <gasps> and put it down, great. You have learned the Romanian deadlift. Congratulations. So having learned the Romanian deadlift, we can now transition into our understanding of the conventional deadlift. Key concept here, the conventional deadlift is the unsexy version of the Romanian deadlift. Stay tuned for that story. Verbal cues, the story sequence here is close the door, go in the woods, shave the legs, and stand up. And of course, the same overarching cues are repeated over and over again. Get sexy, air in the lungs, feet, fingers, thumbs. Let's watch the video. Now we're gonna move on to the conventional deadlift, okay? And now it's very simple. We spend about 40 minutes or 45 minutes learning the Romanian deadlift. And it takes the longest to learn because I had to teach you that whole story. This is why the sequence of events, the order in which I teach you movements, starts with this. Because once you learn the story here, I don't have to repeat the story. It's the same cues for everything else. Now we're gonna go into conventional deadlift and there's only one difference between a Romanian and a conventional deadlift. And I'll show you that difference. So the story for a conventional deadlift is close the door. What was the cue I used? Oh yeah, go in the woods, stand up. So what's the story here? So you're, uh, you're working at the, uh, you're working at the restaurant. Freaking guy with his uh, lawnmower here. I hope the audio doesn't pick it up. I don't think it helped too much. Anyway, so you're working at the restaurant and, uh, and some guy sees you and he's like, oh my God, she's so beautiful. That's my future wife. I'm gonna marry her. But before I do, I have to test her to make sure that she's the right woman for me. 
And uh, the test that he has for you is to take you on a camping trip because he figures if you could go camping, then you could hold your own. You're, a, you're the type of woman that could uh, run a household and be independent, and that's what he likes, you know? So he takes you camping, and, uh, and you're, you're going along the woods, and he wants to see how you're going to react when it's time to uh, do a number two, go to the bathroom in the woods, okay? No toilets, nothing. And so you're there, and he's watching you, and uh, a, little, a little strange that he's watching you do this, but he's watching you. And, um, and you go to the bathroom, and usually in the past, he's, he's made girls take these tests, and they would fail miserably because they'd go to the, the washroom where they uh, take a crap. I'm just going to say it, take a crap, okay? <laughs> they pull their pants down, and they squat down. That's incorrect because then they poop right in their pants, right? And that doesn't work. But you saw, or he saw you do this. You pulled your pants down. And then you just bent your knees slightly forward and you were in this kind of relaxed position like that. And so your poop goes right over there, doesn't uh, fall into your pants. You pass the test. So that's a conventional deadlift, okay? I know it doesn't make sense to you now. Hold on. A Romanians are sexy. Conventional deadlifts are not sexy. No. That whole thing was not sexy. So here's what a conventional deadlift looks like. Same exact setup. But now my knees are forward like this. You see that? That's the only difference. Okay? And I stand up. <sighs> Close the door, shave the legs. Once the bar is below my knees, I drive my knees forward. You see what's happening there? Stand up. <sighs> That's the only difference. This is a Romanian. Look at my legs. My knees are back. Very sexy. This is a conventional. Not sexy because I'm going to take a crap in the woods. <sighs> Give it a try. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now I'm going to tell you when to go, okay? So, yeah. Get sexy. Newspaper in your armpit, knife in the back. Your starting position has the knees forward. So where's your center of gravity now? It's right over the bar, which is this part of your foot, okay? You're being a lazy deadlifter. You see this? You have to lean back. You have 95 pounds to play with. There you go. Take a nice deep breath in. <sighs> Stand up. <sighs> Very slowly. Once the bar's here, you bring the knees forward and right back up. <sighs> That's it. That's all you have to remember. Once the bar passes the knees, bring your knees forward and right back up. <sighs> Good. And relax. Awesome. You see how much simpler that was? Because you have the basic story now in your brain. Again, all these little points that I'm mentioning, you don't have to remember them. It's the emotion of the story. It's the silliness. It's the awkwardness of the story. It becomes memorable because you say, oh, what did Adam say about deadlifts? Oh yeah, that stupid story. I remember. And then you do it properly, right? Let me show you conventional deadlift one more time. <sighs> Cave diver breath, newspaper in your armpit, knife in the back. See how my knees come forward like this. <sighs> One more time for you, and then we'll go to sumo deadlift. I know, I know, it's very fatiguing. So, get sexy. Newspaper in your armpit, knife in the back. A little bit more with the knees, yeah? Exactly, you got it, go ahead. Good, knees forward, push through your feet and stand up. Push, 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 good. As you're coming up, you're pushing through the feet. You're pushing hard through the feet. Put it down. Great. You're tired. It's fine. No big deal. Yeah, yeah. We got. The knees push out all the same here, all right? So before my knees were pushing out in a Romanian position, they're still pushing out in a conventional position. And of course, the movement, the force is going through my feet, right? The feet are pushing through the ground, and that's why the bar lifts. The bar does not lift up because I'm pulling on it. That is a misconception about the deadlift. The deadlift is a type of push, even though we classify it as a pull. Anyway, again, another angle, another perspective here. Grabbing that bar, all right? Hands on the knurling, the thumb is right there. I place my thumb right at the edge of the knurling, and that's my standard grip. That's my ritual with respect to how I position myself. You notice how I'm screwing my feet in the ground here. I'm taking my time with it to make sure 
that I'm doing the motion perfectly. I'm making sure that bar is flush against my um, my shins. I'm making sure that everything is equidistant, as they say, and I'm taking my time to set up properly. Um, you don't want to screw up your setup, uh, as they say in a race. You know, the better your start, the better your finish. Take my deep breath in, use paper in your armpit, knife in the back, get into my conventional deadlift position. I'm pushing through my feet through the ground, pushing my knees out as I descend. Still doing the same newspaper in the armpit cue every time uh, I move through the motion, right? I'm, I'm twisting or uh, torquing my hands so that my elbows point towards the camera in this image. Now you'll notice how uh, close my forearm is to my leg. It's touching, but it's not pressing against my leg in so much that it's collapsing. That's an important um, detail to, to notice. You know, I want my arms to be wide enough to support the width or the girth of my thighs, and I have very girthy thighs. I have thunder thighs, if you will. Um, but I don't want my arms to be so narrow that my legs are unable to uh, spread according to their desire, to their comfort. Here's another angle. Just grabbing that bar again. Same thing on repeat over and over and over and over again. Notice how I'm in this conventional position, this not so sexy position, right? Straight, straight spine. There you go. Take a nice deep breath in and I'm pushing through the ground. Once I'm in that start position, I'm not worrying about anything else. I just stand up. It's close the door, go in the woods. I'm going in the woods now and I just stand up. You notice that my head is perfectly aligned. I'm looking at the ground, right? Um, I'm not like arching my head back like a freaking dinosaur screaming in the Jurassic era, like you see some people do. I'm looking at the ground because I'm imagining that all my force, all my intention is going through my feet. Everything else is in alignment. And that's what you call perfect form. Take a nice deep breath in. Descend, the bar goes past the knees, and that's when I shoot my knees or jut my knees forward over and over and over. The perfect execution of a conventional deadlift. Right over here, right? When the bar is below the knees, that's when my knees shoot forward. You understand? If my bar is above the knees, I can't shoot my knees forward. The bar has to be below the knees for me to shoot my knees forward. And so, some people, they make the mistake of starting to project their knees forward right over here when the bar is at the knees. That's a bad idea. You're going to kick the bar away from yourself. You don't want to do that either. Nice deep breath in. Descend. Here we go. I'm going to, guess what? Once that bar goes right below my knee, I'm going to project my knees or shoot my knees forward. It's going to happen right now. Watch this. All right? Focus on this red circle. Bam! See that? It's like threading a needle. The moment that bar's through the knees, watch my knees shoot forward. The whole time I'm shaving the legs. Damn, I do this well. I'm built for this stuff. No matter how tall you are, how short you are, you could do it the same way. My knees are always torquing out, and my ankles, I mean, spine is straight. Taking a crap in the woods, as I said in the, uh, in the video with Vanessa. And there you have it. Let's look at it here, a little bit more zoomed in. Again, that bar shaving the legs. And you don't have to remember the list. Remember the story. That sexy Romanian waitress, that story is going to be everywhere in every video I make about movement technique. So right now I'm in a Romanian deadlift position, you'll notice. Okay, But as soon as I drive my knees forward, you see that? Now it's a conventional deadlift. That is the difference. The difference between Romanian and conventional is how far forward those knees are and the relative angles between your knees and your hips and so on and so forth. Push down through the feet, drive your feet into the ground, and what ends up happening is that bar lifts up. I am not pulling with my hands, I'm driving my feet into the ground, keeping that torque, that tension. <gasps> Big deep breath. Yeah, you see that torque in the arms? Look at that. Look at that physique. This guy works hard. I don't know about this haircut though. Big deep breath in. <gasps> and I'm holding it. Right, everything is torquing out. My feet are torquing out. My elbows are torquing out. Everything is doing this kind of explosion here. Think of the Manchurian Man in that Da Vinci painting. Right, you're exploding out. Ankles out, knees out, and elbows out too. Go in the woods. Stand up. 
My upper body, my torso, is a single unit. It is a concrete slab of musculature. And the only thing that's bending and moving are my hips and my knees and my ankles. Everything else is locked in there. Man, talk about perfection. One of my rules, eh? Perfect practice makes perfect. We got one more type of deadlift to learn. We did Romanian, we did conventional. Now it's time for sumo. This is the honeymoon phase of uh, your relationship. The guy in the restaurant and, and uh, you, the waitress. By the way, the waitress's name is Barbara. Get it, Barbara? That's, this is your girlfriend, Barbara, okay? So in this scenario, you're Barbara. Sumo deadlift is, you know, you met, uh, you met the guy, Barbara met the guy in the restaurant. They hooked up, they went camping, everything went well. Great, awesome. It's time for the honeymoon. You got married, go to the honeymoon. Where do you go? Japan. Okay, why Japan? Because uh, Barbara's a big fan of uh, Japanese culture. She loves sumo wrestling and um, that's just what happened. And so you're in the hotel room in Japan and, uh, and uh, you're all excited. You wanna, you wanna get busy with, uh, with Barbara, make some babies, right? And you wanna do a Japanese style, sumo wrestler style. That's why it's called a sumo deadlift. So you get into sumo position. This is you, the boyfriend, right? This is Barbara. And you grab, and I'm being very sexual here, but that's too bad if you don't like it. Okay, you grab Barbara by her pigtails, like that. Okay, your hand is directly underneath your shoulder. Okay, and, uh, and Barbara's basically in the hotel room and she's cleaning the windows. She's a neat freak and she just cleans the windows and you're like, ah oh, man, we're spending our whole honeymoon and she's cleaning the windows inside the hotel room, so weird. You grab her by the pigtails and you get in a sumo position and you try to bring your baby maker as close to Barbara as possible. Okay, you see this distance here? This is how much distance I got, okay? Now, depending on how flexible you are and how mobile you are in your hips, you're not gonna be able to get as close to me, but I've developed that flexibility over time. But the idea is to spread your knees as wide as possible, to be as upright as possible, grab Barbara by the pigtails, come up. Give her a baby. Now, what I'm doing is I'm spreading the knees here, pushing them out touching the ground, coming right back up. Everything else is the same. Key point here, the knees must fall on the outside of the foot. If your knees collapse in, you're gonna hurt your knee eventually. Just imagine if someone were to kick you right here, my knees like this, that would really damage my knee very badly. But if I'm in this position and I feel a force out here, I could force against it, I could stabilize that. Your shins, are aligned with one of these little bands here. Make sure they're equidistant, equal distance apart. Okay, and every other rule is the same. Your feet are about a, a 45 degree angle. The distance between your feet is dependent on your height and your flexibility. If you're not super flexible, and this is as far as you could go, then that's where you start. But then when you're up here, with a light weight, relatively light weight, you could kind of inch your feet out like that and descend with a wider stance. And you're slowly gonna open up your groin muscles. Please, go ahead. <clears throat> so I'm gonna help you here. Get in position, grab Barbara by the pigtails. Closer, her pigtails are much closer than that. Yeah, and you have to get into a sumo stance, which is wide. Wider, 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 wider. Bring your baby maker close. Put your feet over here, one foot here. Okay, please uh, just give me a little bit more space. What do you mean, like over here? <laughs> no, I want you to move a little bit back. I need, I need, to, I need to do this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in your face, it's the last one. I'm in, your, I'm in your, your bubble. Come on, come on. We're almost done, we're almost done. Okay. Bring that bar close to your legs. Shave the legs. Your hands should be on the inside of your legs. More, there you go, good. Your knees have to come out more. Good, can you bring your, your shin over here? My what? Your shin, this part of your, yeah. Good, okay, pull back on that bar. You're being a lazy deadlifter, look at that. That's it, I know it's uncomfortable. Okay, take a nice deep breath in. <sighs> Spread your knees out, that's it, pull, start pulling. There you go, <laughs> that's it, good. <sighs> Spread those knees, spread the knees, and up. 
Open that pickle jar. Good. <sighs> Spread the knees. Stretch your groin out and relax. Good. Okay. You'll develop more flexibility and mobility over time. I'll do it one more time and then you'll do it one more time. So again, first thing you do, position your feet. Make sure they're equidistant. As equidistant, go as wide as you could possibly go while keeping your knee on the outside of your foot, okay? The knee cannot be collapsed in, that's danger. Grab Barbara by the pigtails. For me, it's right around here where the knurling begins. This is basically underneath my shoulder, okay? My hands are directly underneath my shoulder. <sighs> my back is really straight here and I'm keeping it straight up and down. When I'm bringing my baby maker into Barbara, She's still cleaning that window. I don't want to smudge the glass that she's cleaning. I'm not leaning forward like a Romanian deadlift or a conventional. I'm leaning backwards in a sumo because Barbara's cleaning that window and I'm trying to make babies. One more time. It's all you. I'll give you, I'll give you your space now. Thank you. Nice and wide. Great, don't be a lazy deadlifter, be a road bike. Yes, now you see now, that's fine. So push your knees out now, don't let your knees collapse in. More out, more out, more out. You see, your knees are collapsing in, which means your feet should be a little closer to each other. Bring your feet closer to each other, there you go. And that allows your knee to be more out here. Pull on the barber's pigtails, there you go. Yes. That's it. You know all your deadlifts. High five. Congratulations. The end. So now we're at the sumo deadlift. And key concepts here, we are in the honeymoon phase of your relationship with Barbara. And things are going good. You and Barbara are obviously hitting it off. You're on your honeymoon. And uh, the verbal cues, the story sequence here, is sumo stands. Grab the pigtails of Barbara. Bring the baby maker close to Barbara. And don't smudge the glass on the, uh, on the window of the hotel. The overarching cues are get sexy, air in the lungs, feet, fingers, thumbs. Those are the overarching cues for this movement. All right, so now we have a video of me performing the movement. First thing I'm doing is I'm positioning myself in the bar and I take my time when I do this, right? I do not rush this beginning portion. A sumo deadlift uh, beginning phase is quite technical. First thing I want to make sure is that my shins are about perpendicular to the ground. My hands are directly underneath my shoulders. Every other deadlift, your hands are outside of the legs. In the sumo deadlift, your hands are on the inside of the legs, your arms on the inside. Take a nice deep breath in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push my feet through the ground by pushing my feet through the ground after I take that breath. Air into lungs, feet, fingers, thumbs, right? This is what I'm doing here. Air into lungs, feet, fingers, thumbs. Once that's all set up, I push my feet into the ground and wonderful things happen. The bar lifts off the ground almost seamlessly and you realize you have tremendous strength. In the sumo deadlift, your knees are pushing out the entire time. You're constantly driving your knees out as you're driving your feet to the ground. All other elements of this deadlift remain the same. Take a nice deep breath in. That's what I'm doing. I descend, pushing my knees out. The bar taps the ground. My feet are torquing. Go right back up, take a nice deep breath in. Constant tension throughout the movement. My body is burning, my muscles are sore, they're aching, my hands wanna give out. That is what a deadlift is. It's constant, consistent ten tension with excellent technique. A little bit closer here. Notice how I take the time to screw my feet in the ground. I'm looking to see if my shins are equidistant. I'm using that little string on the bar, that little ring to see if my shins are equidistant from each other. And of course I set myself up and then I push my feet to the ground and the bar lifts. I do not pull on the bar. I push my feet to the ground. Deep breath in. 
newspaper in your armpit, knife in the back, shave the legs. Take a look at my shoulders as I'm doing this, all right? Newspaper in the armpit. Remember, all these things work in unison to create the type of stability your body needs, your nervous system needs to feel confident about you lifting a heavy weight. And of course, I'm shaving the legs with the bar as I descend. Look at the plates of the bar here. They are going to descend and they're going to tap the ground. I do not lose tension as they touch and I reverse the motion. My focus is air in the lungs, feet, fingers, thumbs repeatedly. Air in the lungs, feet, fingers, thumbs. Another angle. The first thing I worry about is how close can I bring that bar to my shins? It could be touching. Shave the legs with the bar as they say, or as I say. I grab that bar, I screw my feet into the ground, I make sure my legs are equidistant. And then what do I say to myself? Air in the lungs. Feet, check. Fingers, check. Thumbs, check. Look at my spine here. My chest is sticking out. There's a nice natural S curve to my spine. Right, I'm kind of sitting back. And as I rise up, the bar lifts. As I push my feet to the ground, everything moves up. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction, right? Look at my head, how it hangs over the bar here. That's about the only thing that's um, in front of me is my head. And every other part of me is kind of leaning back here. I'm using that bar as a counterweight. And that's what you want to do. You don't want that bar to escape your shins. You want it to be hugging you the whole time, keeping that center of gravity nice and close. Otherwise, you're liable to injure your back if that bar rolls away from your shins at any point, depending on the weight relative to your strength. Descend, pushing my knees out, and the bar hits the ground, always keeping that tension repeatedly. A little bit closer now in my angle. Air in the lungs, feet, fingers, thumbs, over and over. We're repeating the basics. I sit back, pulling on Barbara's pigtails. My spine is nice and straight. If I were to let go of that bar in this position, I would fall backwards because I'm using that bar as a counterweight. My head is hanging over the edge. Air in the lungs, feet, fingers, thumbs. You see me doing it here over and over. At this point, it's automatic for me. Newspaper in your armpit, knife in the back. And I drive my feet into the ground. Take a nice deep breath at the top. Newspaper in your armpit. Right, what am I gonna do? That first part, newspaper in your armpit, there you go. And it's gonna be close the door, shave the legs. Knife in the back, but in a sumo stance. We're repeating, we're repeating the basics over and over and over again. My knees are always pushing out as I'm doing this. If you let your knee collapse in as you're doing a sumo deadlift, you may hurt yourself. And so I suggest that you progress the weight at the rate that allows you to practice perfectly. Perfect practice makes perfect. Do not repeat inconsistencies. You will just drive those into your nervous system and become an automatic poor exerciser, your technique will be miserable. Do not let it happen. Perfect practice makes perfect. Look how close my groin is to Barbara here. The bar, okay? I wanna give Barbara that baby maker. Head hanging over to bar. All the subtleties here, put them on repeat over and over again, and that is a sumo deadlift.